we projected that every positive case is likely to infect 2.5 persons in 4.8 days. We could have, the modeling takes either one infectivity rate, 1.5 infectivity rate two, or 2.5 infectivity rate or higher. And when, when we looked at our cases and the modeling, we fit more with the 2.5 uh, uh, in the cases. And I think uh, as things stand now, we are progressing uh, along you know, that curve. Now, um, what do I expect? Definitely, the projections is a, uh, is a means to, to forecast what is likely to happen if we didn't do anything extra. Since coming up with the modeling, the government has come, has come up with a, with a partial lockdown, uh, with a curfew. That curfew um, is positive and therefore is going to affect the modeling. And therefore, we should see some cases and um, the projections will not be as high. I'll give you an example. You, you know, the US, they projected that 200,000 people were going to die. Now, yesterday, the Surgeon General came out, <coughs> the Surgeon General came out to say that um, because 97% of the population has been put on curfew, they think that number is going to fall dramatically. Uh, I keep saying that um, the, uh, uh, the lockdown or the curfew buys us time. It buys us time so that we have enough time to get uh, enough ventilators into the system. We have time to have enough uh, swabs and test kits and all that into the system. U.S. doesn't have everything. And that's why they even received uh, uh, gifts from, you know, from Russia. The same with, with all countries. We have enough for now to test what, what, what we think uh, our, our contacts, uh, uh, contact tracing testing are going to be. But it gives us enough time to get our acts together, get a, a, a designated hospital for COVID, or a designated health center for COVID. All, all those are activities are, are there. And it's my understanding that there's going to be a mobile clinic, as, two mobile clinics as well, so that it gives us time to have all of them operational so that persons who call and kind of get through or they call and, and someone says, we'll come and visit you and don't come, at least you have, um, you have these uh, mobile, mobile uh, uh, vans in the communities to, to, to review you know, persons who may have you know, symptoms and also either rule in or rule out. If they rule out, then those persons can be treated there and then, uh, you know, at the mobile uh, uh, vans. If they are ruled in, immediately the, the, the specimen is taken for testing and within, within eight hours we have their answer. Um, I think the country is also uh, starting the possibility of having uh, prototypes of what is happening at GPAC, whereby you may have a tent uh, of a health center uh, so they are selecting a few health centers or, um, or establishments whereby people can go to and have um, uh, COVID testing or assessment done. So I think uh, 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 those things, those things are, are in the right direction. And uh, I'm hoping that um, the time that we have, before we reach that 20,000, the time that we have, we have the opportunity to get what, what we need in place. I think uh, mass testing uh, satisfies our curiosity. Um, uh, in an in an era where where we have um, uh, where everybody is is afraid of dying, or is afraid of getting contaminated, is afraid of having come in contact with somebody one one way or the other. Everybody wants to know to know their status. I'm afraid this molecular test is not a screening device. It's a is a, 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 a diagnostic test and therefore it cannot be used for mass screening. However, uh, some people have been uh, 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 trying to impress upon government you know, to look at antibody testing. Uh, I must say that I just checked with our virologist, um, the one who helped us you know, to also set up the lab, um, that the molecular test that we have now is able to, to, to find all positives within two days of, uh, of, uh, of getting the virus. And seven days even after the, um, the, the, the incubation you know, period, as opposed to the screening tests that are less, less, you know, less sensitive, where, where uh, most of them are able to only test positive after the seventh day. So I think um, uh, if, if we are going to do 
mass you know, screening, I think it's it's it it is not uh, um, it's not cost beneficial. I'll give you another another uh, 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 number in Ghana, where I come from. I I, I, I am informed that um, people were clamoring for mass testing. They tested ninety seven thousand people, ninety seven thousand people, and they came up with only two hundred positives, about two hundred positives. So mass testing is not the way to go. So that's one. I think. Everybody who needs to be tested needs to be tested. And I, I, I think we have to ensure that anybody who needs to be tested needs to be, you know, needs to be tested so that they are institutionally isolated. Uh, persons who don't need you know, to be tested and may be, may be fearful of having been contaminated or having been exposed, those persons have to be seen by the system and treated for what they have so that they can lay their, their minds no address because um, uh, and we all know that uh, if if one is scared if one is afraid um, uh, if there's a lot of paranoia in the system the immunity falls so the the more we we become afraid the more we are likely to even uh, you know you know get uh, you know infected and we need to deal with that